It's 2.05. We'd like to call the meeting to order. We'll start with the roll call. Commissioner Conant. Commissioner Ziegenmeyer. Here. Commissioner Boomgarden. Here. Commissioner Wooten. Here. Commissioner Munger. Commissioner Cochran. Commissioner Juwanda. Here. Commissioner Baines. Here. Commissioner Espindola. Commissioner Elphick. Okay. Matt Connor okay. here. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Item number C is approval of the agenda. Get a motion. I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Oh. Okay. Motion. I'm sorry. Who seconded that? Okay. Item number two is approval of the minutes from the September 9th uh, move to, meeting. Move to approve. Comment. Second. I second. Motion and second. Item number three is the consent agenda. Could I get a motion? Move to approve. Second. And we have an action for a payment of claims for September and October 2021. Could I get a motion? Yeah. Yeah. I'll vote. Commissioner Conant. Aye. Mr. Zingenmeyer? Aye. Commissioner Boomgarden? Aye. Commissioner Wooten? Yes. Commissioner Jawanda? Aye. Item number four is public communication. Uh, members of the public are invited to address the commission on any matters of interest to the public that is not on the agenda for a period of time not exceeding five minutes. The commission cannot take any action on items not listed on the agenda. I will. Open that up. Seeing none. Can... Item number five is the workshop to review and discuss the upcoming 2021 fire and EMS municipal service review and sphere of influence update for fire and EMS service providers in Sutter County. Uh, at the commission's direction for the last meeting, we de decided that we would have a, a workshop regarding the upcoming service review and sphere of influence um, for uh, Sutter, Sutter County. The, the, I would say the major focus of this is the unincorporated areas of the county. Um, and uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Beverly Burr, who is, this is her project. And so... Uh, she has a few words to say, and I notice that we have lots of uh, uh, people from the fire chiefs community or fire boards here. So at this point, I really don't have much to say, except that we are anticipating to having some sort of a product in January. Uh, and um, so we can um, fair, move fairly quickly with that. So go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. oh good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, commissioners. Um, at your direction at the last meeting, my understanding was you had asked the fire chiefs to be here, and you can see they've all, I think they're all here. So, um, I wasn't quite sure how to prepare them for what you were interested in hearing from them, but um, I will tell you, they've all been uh, really cooperative with um, initial data gathering for the municipal service review. Um, of course, the county and Yuba City have it a little easier since all their documents are, 
or so many of their documents are online and available that way, and it's a little more challenging for our smaller districts. But um, we things are moving along great, and um, certainly the hope is to have it ready for um, your consideration at your January meeting. Um, I know that's a little ambitious given the holiday period, but um, it seems possible at the moment. Um, uh, I'm in touch with both the YOLO and Sutter dispatch operations to get data from there, which will be very interesting. Um, and um, I, they've both been very responsive so far, and I'm certainly hopeful that all that will go seamlessly and we'll have great information together for you. Um, one thing, um, I mean, I've prepared um, all the affected agencies as to what the, the required findings are for the municipal service review, the topics, facility needs, and financing, and what have you. Um, one thing that's always interesting to hear at this juncture, um, before the study's written and before all the data is collected, is how can the study be most um, helpful and useful for your commission and for the affected agencies? And I certainly, I, my hope is to hear more about that today. So it'll help inform the study and make the study more useful for your commission in the future. So. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Through the chair, are we are we going to hear from these uh, fire chiefs tonight, today? Then is that the plan? Or I was I, that's what I assumed you would like. I had yes. asked if they might speak to their top service challenges. I wasn't sure what you most wanted to hear from them, but maybe you could tell them, and they're they're here. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't want to speak on behalf of, of the commission, but I know that I'm interested in uh, an understanding, uh, as you mentioned, their, their concerns moving forward. If their head hits the pillow at night, what are the things that they're concerned about as the, the subject matter experts in their delivery systems? But I think most importantly for me, um, and I'm representing the cities and Yuba City specifically, is um, there's a lot of reliance on all these agencies to help each other during the time of need. And I want to make sure that in this municipal services review that we take that into consideration because uh, any one agency is generally not able to handle something you know, lo significantly large within their own. So uh, a, a deliverable that I would request is how best is this Sutter County fire delivery system able to address you know, large scale whatever's that come to their particular entity and how's that working, uh, mutual aid, et cetera. I, I'm, I'm not casting shade on any of that. I just don't know anymore. And so it's important for me to understand how that best works. And then I, I noticed Mr. Bumpus in the background, pre-hospital emergency medical care is a huge component, at least of the, the fire department that operates within our city. Where are we at with that? You know, what are, are we... Um, are we making sure that if that's a component of those delivery systems that the fire departments are taking that into consideration and, and doing their part um, and, and an effective partner with the private sector ambulance company as well? If you'd like to start with the um, neediest departments, um, maybe Mark would be willing to um, start it off. Uh, this is Mark Richter. He's the chair of the board of Sutter Basin Fire District, a.k.a. Robin. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Mark Richter. I'm a commissioner of the Sutter Basin Fire District. I've been on the board I don't know, eight to ten years. Um, and as Beverly politely put it, we are, pro we are the neediest um, department. We, we've been without a chief. Uh, for about two years now, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling to answer calls. We've been getting a lot of help from, historically, we've had a, uh, a work together with Knights Landing, even though Knights Landing is in Yolo County, um, and it's, it's sort of been a, we've, we've had mutual aid agreements, and, and it's been, you know, a pretty even sharing back and forth. Uh, for actually for a period of time prior to the last decade, it was probably 
probably Robin's helping Knights Landing more than the other way. Uh, now that is completely shifted, and uh, not only is Knights Landing having to come help us, but a lot of times the Yolo, the town of Yolo's fire department, which is a you know it's a good 40-minute haul to parts of our district. If uh, Knights Landing is facing the same issues that we are, we have no, we have some volunteers, but they're not around during the daytime. And so if there's a call in the daytime, uh, we're at the mercy, you know, uh, the other Sutter County departments are coming to help. Yolo's coming to help. Um, but it could be a long, a long time before, uh, before anybody gets there. The, our first task, or our, the way I, I feel our first thing is to try to get reorganized and come up with a chief. We obviously can't, I don't, I don't, there's nobody that I know of that's qualified or willing or either to become a volunteer chief anymore. The, the last chief was a professional firefighter in another area and was, was traveling to Napa and coming back, going back and forth, and, but, but he could keep things running. Uh, we just don't have anybody else like that around. So we are looking to try to hire somebody as what we're calling a consultant or administrative chief, where they wouldn't be answering calls or doing any of the any of that kind of stuff. They would just be helping us to take care of our equipment, uh, make sure the volunteers are being trained properly, uh, organize volunteers, help recruit volunteers, uh, work on these agreements with other districts, that kind of stuff. Um, but we're 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 preparing to put out a flyer to hire somebody on a on a consulting type basis for that. Uh, what we'd be hoping for is possibly a retired firefighter or somebody, a younger firefighter that's working his way up through the ranks and wants to maybe make a little extra money and have something else to put on his resume to possibly be a chief or a higher ranking uh, firefighter somewhere else. Uh, we, we've come up with a flyer. I've, I've been, uh, Chief Shalowitz has been helping me with that a little bit and another another chief uh, out of the area that I know personally, uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna get, get get with them and find out where to post it and hopefully we can get somewhere. Then the next step would be to hire somebody to man the station during the daytime. Um, and that would be, you know, that we would not be able to afford probably either one of those by themselves, let alone both on our current budget. So then, the next step would be to try to have, an, have a 218 election and raise some more money to maintain that. I don't feel like, at this point, I don't think it would be prudent to try to get that money coming until we have something in place that we can show voters, this is what we have, this is what we, if you want to keep this, this is what, this is what it's going to cost. Uh, I, I don't think, I, I'd be concerned it would be a very difficult task to pass something like that, just saying, well, we need more money, we want to come up with something. We want to have something to show people what we've got and try to try to get there. Um, I, uh, I ho hopefully, if we had something like that in place, we could raise money to afford that. Uh, I'll, I'll finish with one quick other comment is, Knight's Landing would be a perfect partner for us to share chief hired firefighter, um, they could, pretty could respond we could respond to each other's districts much quicker than other districts coming to help us because of our proximity the you know the obvious issue is the separate counties uh, we, we we kind of spun our wheels for a long time here trying to trying to work trying to go jointly with the Knights Landing district on coming up on solving something like this and uh, it doesn't seem like they're they're wanting to do that at this time. I, I, I feel like maybe Yolo County is is the is the force behind that, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, so our thinking is, if we can come up with something, uh, even though we, it's something we can't afford for the long term, and and have something that looks like they that would be something they'd be interested in sharing with us, uh, and then maybe at that time. And we can start working on on some sort of cooperative agreement. Uh, 
one contracting the services to the other or some other some other type of thing like that I think in the long in the long term that would be the best solution uh, both economically and providing uh, you know a minimum level of service or a decent level of service uh, that's kind of where we are right now uh, I, I guess I could answer questions if anybody has any. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. If we get the next department that wants to come up, if you could state your name and the department. Good afternoon, Jason Cooper, Meridian Fire Department, um, West Sutter County. Uh, we've serviced about 93 square miles. Um, we're bordered by, by Sutter County Fire, uh, Oswald, Live Oak, and Sutter. Um, to the west, we have Calusa, uh, Sac River, that, that is our, our western border. Uh, Robbins Fire is our, our southern border. Um, I have a wonderful board of directors that has allowed us, allowed me to, to take our department where, where it needs to go. Our, our biggest problem in most rural departments right now is staffing. Um, we we kind of stepped away from the, uh, we haven't stepped away from the, the volunteer side. The, the volunteers are very difficult to find in a rural setting. We, our, our town is, is 420 people. We service about 15 to 1800 people within our, our, our entire district. So it, it becomes very difficult. Um, I have been paid since 2001. Uh, I became the paid chief in 2003. Um, we have had a seasonal firefighter that, that is paid since 2001, I believe, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, that seasonal position turned into a full-time position probably about eight years ago, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a little longer. Uh, um, since then, we have added another this fire season, we started with two additional full-time employees for a total of four of us. Um, since then, we have lost one, Chief Shalowitz. Um, retention, retention is, is the biggest problem for us, retention and recruitment of, of the, the volunteers. Um, kind of interested to, to see what Beverly can put together for us to, uh, and, and see where we can go from there. You guys have anything? Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Next department. Good afternoon. John Shallow at Sutter County Fire Chief. Um, kind of go if uh, I, I cover all of the unincorporated areas of the county. Um, I do have our volunteer, volunteer assistant chief for East Nicholas Pleasant Grove. I'm also the administrative chief of those districts as well. So I'll kind of speak to the large area that I cover and what we have as responsibilities. Um, first thing I'd like to address is, uh, Commissioner Boomgarner, you talk about mutual aid. Uh, mutual aid in this county actually is very strong. Uh, Chief Alexander has been a blessing coming to Yuba City and coming to this area and being able to support and work with him. He's become my right-hand man at the OES level to help with... Uh, uh, strike team management during the wildland season or any type of special request for uh, master mutual aid request, strike team request, and um, all agencies are here participate in that uh, that can. Uh, Mr. Richter's department doesn't have the staffing to be able to participate in that, but hopefully in the future he'll be able to get that, that up and running. Um, so I wanted to start with a comment on that. I do truthfully feel that our mutual aid program is very strong, and I do feel that we back each other uh, regularly um, and we all basically would give anything for any department that we can at any time. So um, for my department, uh, just like everybody said, and I, I'm sure everybody's going to say the same thing, uh, staffing. Uh, we're our combination department, so we rely on volunteers and we have 18 paid, uh, sorry, 21 full, including myself, but 18 on the line um, with two battalion chiefs and then myself. The uh, hard, time, hard thing for us right now is volunteers. Nobody really wants to volunteer uh, anymore without compensation. A true volunteer program really doesn't really exist anymore in the fire service. 
uh, there has to be some sort of compensation for it. Um, we try to do that with small stipends. We try to do that with help assisting with training uh, and keeping them uh, up and going and positively responding to calls and supporting them. So that, that's one of our main challenge would be staffing. Uh, and then beyond that is the, uh, the elephant in the corner is funding. Uh, Sutter County Fire ha is based off of a very small portion of the Avalorum property tax. Um, and we also have a special fire tax that was initiated in 1997. And since that time, there's never been a CPI or an inflation, inflation portion in that. So we're basing our taxation off of 1997 income, which obviously, as you all know, uh, we, you can't do that. <laughs> it doesn't financially work out. So we are exploring uh, with the help of the county CAO's office uh, and other divisions and an ad hoc, we have an ad hoc committee uh, established within the county to look at what are the options uh, going after a special tax or how we can fix the financial side of Sutter County Fire Department. So uh, without getting into the weeds of a lot of that and boring you and putting you to sleep with all that, um, that's pretty much our department and in a whole. I also just actually want to talk to the fact that uh, for cities, uh, we also have the contract for the city of Live Oak, provide services uh, within that out of my Live Oak station, which actually is located in the city, but we also provide services to the unincorporated area and that up in that area as well. Um, that contract is up for uh, negotiation, I believe, starting next year. We've had a great working re relationship with uh, Live Oak, and uh, hopefully that will continue as well. Um, is there any questions at all? Thank you, Mr. Shallow. Yep. Next. This is your, just one, John. So you mentioned the training issue with fire, uh, volunteers that's become problematic, and, and there's no way around that. You, the state requires that they are be the state or federal, please state, right? Yeah, there's a state requirement of what we have to do for training yearly. And the hours of training and so on and so forth. And do you see a solution to that problem? Uh, a commitment from, from outside people and constituents to come in and want to be a volunteer is, is the problem. You just don't have that, that pick of the litter of people to come that want to do the job. Um, that's the problem. And then... Um, the volunteer fire service is, is, I hate to say this, is dying on the West Coast. It's the longest, the largest fire service, part of the fire service in the country is volunteer. So the California has just gone, a lot of paid departments has gone paid. And a lot of people are hiring and they're getting bigger. So the, a lot of the younger kids that are coming out of the academy are going straight into paid jobs or they're using uh, departments that are smaller like mine, like Stepping Stones. Uh, as you saw, Jason took one of, I took someone from Jason. Jason has taken people from mine. We, we share people. I've had uh, staff members go to Yuba City Fire. I go to Sac City Fire. It's just the nature of the beast right now. And it's hard to keep that training going uh, and the commitment from the volunteers. Our volunteers down south, East Nicholas and Pleasant Grove, uh, John Borgman is the assistant chief of Pleasant Grove and East Nicholas right now. I'm newly appointed, congratulations, uh, last month. And um, we have a great response out of them. Uh, they, you know, they, they've all had their struggles and he can maybe speak to that as well. Um, and he might be the best to answer that question, Commissioner Conant, as to he's dealing with the volunteers on a regular basis more than I am. Um, but the problem is the commitment. Uh, you can schedule trainings and you have 45 person roster and three people show. Mm. And People have lives and they don't want to necessarily commit to the volunteer programs, and it's hard. Um, lives are changing, life is changing, uh, the world is changing, obviously, so that the old school thought process of volunteer firefighting is not necessarily there and commitment to the community. So it's hard, and it's hard for uh, smaller communities, obviously the rural communities, to get even fine staffing that are capable to do it. Um, the key thing to remember is it's not like you're just coming in and you're playing Xbox or doing something, you you're physically have to be fit for the job, uh, trustworthy enough that you don't have a background, a criminal background. And um, I know some of you have been in the, back, in the fire service in the past and, and done volunteer time and full-time uh, fire service stuff. So you understand that, but we can't just take anybody. 
I wish I could because there is people out there that are willing to do it. It's just uh, it becomes a liability uh, if they're going to get hurt uh, or cause issues for for the department. So it's an ongoing battle. It's multifaceted with the volunteers. So hopefully that answers shortly with a long-winded answer. Thanks, John. Yep. Uh, it's kind of what I thought. I just had to ask the question. Okay. Thank you. John Borgman, I'm the Assistant Chief of Pleasant Grove Fire. Um, at this time, Pleasant Grove and Nicholas use the same officers. Um, I kind of prepared a statement, but Chief Shallow has uh, already touched on a lot of what I was going to say. Um, the, the history of the volunteer fire departments down there in South County, and this is in Pleasant Grove. We serve Pleasant Grove, Nicholas, Trowbridge, Rio Oso, um, and a couple other one-house town names in there. Um, Nicholas covers... 76 square miles, Pleasant Grove is 68-ish, I believe. Um, and we have four stations spread out through that, through that, uh, through that space. We have one up in Rio Oso. We have uh, the main station for Nicholas there in Nicholas. We have a main station for Pleasant Grove uh, on Housley Road. And we have a secondary Pleasant Grove station down off of uh, Sankey. Chief Shallow, it spoke to our issue of volunteerism. Um, we've we're shooting, we're working with Chief Shallowitz to set up a, uh, a sleeping quarters, a more appropriate sleeping quarters in Nicholas so that we can get some uh, younger guys in there to volunteer to pull 24 hour shifts um, that'll help with coverage at night. Our main struggle is coverage during the daytime because most of our volunteers do have, you know, full time jobs and many are uh, no longer in the community, right? Uh, when these volunteer departments were started, Many of the volunteers were farmers. They were there in the community every day, all day long. We're all commuting off to the city, you know, so we're gone 10, 12 hours out of the day. And so that really put a hamper on our response times during the middle of the day. Um, we're working to hire a, what would be a full-time position to cover essentially Monday through Friday, eight to five, while the rest of us are off uh, uh, in our world. Um, and the struggle that we find there, once again, well, like these other gentlemen have covered is uh, uh, funding. Through Sutter County, we essentially end up paying that full-time person uh, $14 and change an hour, right? We're looking for, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, we're looking for somebody who has most often a college degree, uh, years in the fire service, uh, spent countless hours, most of them as volunteers, and been trained that way also. And we're offering, you know, the only thing we have to offer is pay pay compatible, uh, comparable to a, a fast food restaurant. So the funding sources become a serious issue. Um, we've been able to stay on top of equipment. I think we've been in the South County, we've been uh, pretty fortunate in that aspect. Uh, most of our equipment is turnkey, so that when, when a call does go off, a volunteer can show up to the station and rely and, and depend on an engine to start and get there, get us where we need to go. Um, in, that, in that regard, we've, we've done well. But the staffing issues during the daytime are one of our biggest challenges for sure. Um, the ambulance services that we use in the South County, uh, I think it's worth taking a look at that also. Uh, By County has, has traditionally been our, our primary uh, private ambulance company that we've used. And now we've have the city of Roseville, the city of Sacramento, you know, we're, we're city of Lincoln, we're kind of getting boxed in a little bit. And so there are other companies out there such as AMR who, yes, on the northern end of the Nicholas jurisdiction, by county is gonna beat them by 15 minutes, no problem. In the southern end of our district, especially down around the Riego Road area, AMR is staged, you know, 10, 15 minutes away. And we really don't have an effective way to communicate directly with them. Most of those communications go through the Sutter County dispatch, then to the By County dispatch, and then to AMR's dispatch, and then, uh, you know, 15 minutes later, you can get a response out of an ambulance, and at that at that time, you know, an ambulance is driven down from Yuba City already. So we do have some things we can work on on that side of it, um, but uh, the 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 personnel, the 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 staffing issues, and the funding issues are are major concerns. 
Any questions for Mr. Borden? Thank you. Jesse Alexander, Yuba City Fire Chief. Yuba City Fire Department provides fire and rescue services to the Yuba City City Limits area, in addition to the CSAG area, which you can see on page two is identified in the red map associated there. We do this by providing it through five fire stations strategically located throughout the city. Uh, each one of those stations has a variety of apparatus, but a primary type one engine is at each one staffed with three personnel. We have a total of 48 operational personnel and six administrative. Right now we're rolling uh, approximately over the last three years, we've been over 10,000 calls. It's anticipated that this year we'll exceed 11,000 calls for, um, and then you'll see at the very end there, you'll see our mutual aid and automatic aid responses as uh, Chief Shalowitz addressed earlier. Uh, for those total numbers. For us, some of the concerns that you've already heard, even though we're um, a moderate sized uh, municipality, we still have recruitment and retention issues, uh, similar to other departments of our size. You're also looking at some of the funding sources uh, that go for large scale purchases or always an option in trying to get creative in those regards. <clears throat> but uh, to answer Commissioner uh, Boomgarten's question of what worries me the most, uh, for us as a municipality is, is two, two situations. Our overlapping calls because of our call volume of having so many resources tied up and then these other calls come in. But then also looking at your moderate and high complexity incidents, knowing that we need a minimum of 24 personnel at a moderate size complexity incident, that's gonna be difficult to get sometimes. Uh, and so that's one of those things that when I'm looking at, when I say moderate size complexity, I'm looking at strip mall fires, large commercial, things along those lines. And so you need those individuals to be able to get there. And uh, our operational, daily operational staff is 16. So we do rely heavily if we get into one of those on our mutual aid and automatic aid situations. Any questions? Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Good afternoon. My name is Alex Bumpus, Spy County Ambulance Service. Uh, I don't have the fire side. I'm a private uh, contracted with Sutter County. I can echo this exact same uh, problems, right? Staffing is, is highly difficult. Um, especially when you have the Sacramento and Roseville areas. Um, I think one of the things that everybody can kind of jump in on is that you've seen a change in how the, I'm gonna say younger generation, even though I kind of fit into that space, doesn't have that same community feel anymore. It's just not quite there. I have a lot of staff that live outside of the area. I have people that come from Auburn because they want the experience and they want me to train them and then within 12 to 18 months, especially if it's a paramedic that wants to be a fireman, they jump this roster list, right? And they all can vouch for, if you have a large fire agency that's looking for staff, same mark, right? There's 500 applicants, right? And as soon as they say, hey, you have a 911 paramedic with legitimate experience, he will bump 300 on the list. And so I just had two go to Folsom Fire. I have three notifications this week that I have more paramedics that are in backgrounds for fire jobs. Uh, I had two go to Sac City two months ago. And so I have the same, same issue with staffing um, and we are looking everywhere. And even even with Yuba College EMTs, half of the EMTs that are going to the Yuba College program are not from this community. They know that I can get into the EMT program here. It's one semester. I hire, I used to hire quarterly and run a program to do that. I will pick up two people if I have to because they put in applications. 
and I pay for finding paramedic applications. I'm spending thousands of dollars a month actively looking for paramedics to bring in, and I've just hired one three months ago. Brand new paramedic, has zero skills. I paid extra for this gentleman to ride as a third guy on an ambulance, which is not cost effective in any way, and actually had supervisors running with him for two weeks so that he's good enough to put in our service and go out and provide to the community, and he's already looking for that fire job. And so it's, it's difficult, it's, it's a strain, right? Costs have gone up everywhere. I mean, my medical supplies have gone up 250% since COVID. Right? It's just, and they have the same issues, right? We have a large exchange program with all the fire agencies. If whoever, I think Linda's probably the only agency that doesn't come get oxygen at our facility, but it's part of that pay. If you're gonna use it on the calls, we're gonna have all of that there, but all of the costs are going up. And I have a lot of staff that forgot this is a 24-7, 365 job. I have a lot of people that go, I'll come work for you, but I want Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from like 10 to 4. <laughs> that's, that's just not there. I had an EMT yesterday ask if I would provide a gas stipend for him to come to work. So the mindset's just not there, and it's, it's an absolute struggle. We're working with... Yuba College to try to find local, because I truly feel that that's the only way that we can really try to combat that, is to have as many local staff as possible. The problem is I can't find them. And I am that stepping stone to the fire service because I'll never be able to provide a PERS retirement program. I, I can't, you know, it doesn't pencil out for us in that way and there's no financial way for that to take place. So. We, we do have the same struggles, and unfortunately, I don't have any of the answers, but uh, I, I can just echo what they're saying. Staffing's huge community, and having that younger generation that's okay working nights and weekends and holidays, right? I've done it for a long time where we have Christmas on a different day, but that's not the mindset anymore, and they want their time. And so other than that, um, we're maintaining our staffing. The other issues that we see is, um, you know, it's difficult for personnel everywhere, including the hospital level. Our wall times, which is an ambulance arrives to the hospital to offload a patient, used to be 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I've done two hours three times yesterday. And so that changes our rotation in. It has me to have to increase staffing. I have management that is now staffed during the week for the most part, and then I can bring EMTs on that just sit at my office in case we have to up staff to cover for that coverage need, which is just an increased cost, right? And everybody knows personnel is the highest cost that you're ever gonna have. And those are some of the steps that we've had to put in place in order to try to alleviate the issues and the pain that we feel when we have uh, those complexities in our operations, so. I'm open for any questions, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay. Looks like there's a lot of shared challenges. And thank you to um, uh, Fire Chief Alexander for the presentation. Through the chair, I'd follow up probably more for Beverly. Um, first off, uh, on pre hospital emergency medical care, we're doing a municipal services review on fire. But I believe each one of these agencies is also providing pre-hospital emergency medical care. We're really fortunate that we have Bi-County as a long-term partner in this, and we've just heard the challenges they have. So uh, I, as one commissioner anyway, would be extremely interested in making sure that we cover the pre-hospital emergency medical care, because if Mr. Bumpus and his company uh, can't do business, and it falls to uh, the gentlemen and members of their departments, to continue to provide that, it's going to—it's a whole different level of service, yeah. and uh, I think that uh, it, that's one ask for me anyway as a commissioner. Uh, on the subject of mutual aid, um, let me go to volunteerism first. Uh, I think you know it was very well spoken by uh, several of the chiefs. Volunteerism is not the solution uh, long term 
for the fire service uh, here locally. It's just not going to be. People, the nature of, of the United States and especially the West Coast, as was pointed out, does not support continuing you know, to, to consider volunteers as the backbone of your service delivery system. At the end of the day, the constituents get to choose what level of service they have. But um, I think that you know it was many years ago that that uh, at least in this city that we we had to migrate away from that system for the very reasons that some of these departments are continuing to be challenged by that. You, you can't get people, and if you can, they're busy during the day when you might need them. You can't. They're they're going off to other places. Uh, one thing that that is available out there that I would hope and and at this point perhaps they've considered and maybe it's just not feasible is partnering with the fire academy for some gappage in the evening time. It's mutually beneficial. Uh, we've done some internship stuff here in the city. There there could be some labor issues with that, but you know that's a those folks are needing experience and perhaps they can help in the evening. Um, mutual aid. It's going to be challenging uh, to continue. Uh, if you look at the statistics just that, that Chief Alexander put, you know, you know, relying on each other is extremely important. We do it statewide, and we probably are the, the poster child for that statewide as far as master mutual aid system. However, at the same time, uh, each department becomes more and more strained. Their ability to provide those resources to share becomes more strained. And I, I'm just looking at the statistics here, you know, we, we in Yuba City, as, as an example, uh, gave mutual aid 20 times in the first six months to Marysville and, and have only received it twice. And, you know, that's not an equal sharing. That's not reciprocity, right? And at some point, these chiefs are going to end up having to make the tough decision, hey, we're at drawdown and we can't provide you any help. And I imagine that's probably already happened I, um, with, all of, with all of them. And so... I think that needs to be factored in the municipal service re review. You can't just assume that, well, I've got, you know, I've got Robins to the south of me and, and uh, they're going to be able to, to supply um, mutual aid because they may not be able to or Meridian or Live Oak or any of the, of the departments. Um, when you get to drawdown, you're at drawdown. And I think that's important uh, to, to include in the report. Um, whether you're in the city or the county, it's an investment in public safety. And I think we really need to understand through the options what that investment's really going to look like. Because again, it's the level of service and what is it that the constituents are willing to, uh, to provide as far as revenue to provide that level of service. And what level of service is that? Is it I want to stop a fire at the point of origin? Do I want to stop it at the building of origin? Do I want to stop it at the block of origin? Do I want to stop it at the city limits of origin? I don't know what, those is for, what that is, but that's really the bottom line here, I think. And um, I appreciate each one of the chiefs coming and, and speaking. I, I can tell they're speaking from their heart. Um, and I, you know, I respect each and every one of them for what they're trying to do in a system that isn't necessarily uh, providing them with all the resources they need to provide those um, services. And to Mr. Bumpus, thank you again continually for, for what Bi-County Ambulance does. I, I know it doesn't always make great business sense, but I know you're out there um, trying to, to provide those services and, and you do a good job for our community. That concludes my comments. Through the chair. Um, so I'd like to touch on a couple of things that Mark brought up as well. Um, I, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who came and spoke today. Um, I My background is I was a volunteer fireman for over 20 years and, and um, it's getting harder and harder and harder to get qualified volunteers, as Mark said. The only problem is, is it's hard to fund a volunteer fire program in like the Robbins Basin where you don't have very many people, or like even like East Nicholas and Pleasant Grove. You guys have 140 square miles roughly. Um, I'm guessing something less than 4,000 people live in that basin. Those And, and in Robbins, way less. I'm talking about the uh, East Nicholas Pleasant Grove district. Um, how do you fund full-time firemen for where you have that few people? But yeah, you have a lot of people driving through those communities that get in vehicle accidents and you gotta provide service for. Um, and I don't know the, the answers to those problems and solutions to them is very problematic at best. 
And the same thing goes with Robinson. You guys are even more sparsely populated and have way less people to back up on for volunteers. And the paid, paid volunteers for a population that low is, I mean, paid, paid full-time firemen for those populations that low, very difficult. Um, we got to really think out of the box on this and come up with some solutions to it. And I know Sutter County, we're working on that right now. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't claim to know the answers. I'm, I'm stumped as much as everybody else sitting up here. But thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. I just want to note that council stepped out. Our council stepped out. Okay. Anything else to add on that, John? Right. No, no I, I don't, but um, Beverly, I think, has received a lot of direction from today's meeting and that um, we'll try our best to come up to, with, for some solutions or options for solutions um, it, within the um, service review document. Uh, sure. Use the podium, please. It sounds like besides some of the policy issues for your commission to consider through the spheres of influence you'll be updating, um, the, fi the fi financing sources is perhaps what I'm kind of hearing is the top issue because that feeds into funding um, full-time paid firefighters. And the other part that seems top is labor market analysis. For firefighters I don't know is that kind of sounding about right I don't know what the scope of a, a municipal service review is in this day and age but I guess you know what 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 happens what are you know here's this this is, would be you know a, a minimal level of service right and here's here would be an ideal level of service um, and I and I think in each one of the agencies represented you know, they probably have that information of what it would look like if they could have it that way, but what would it take to get there? And I also think it's, you know, I hate to use the term doomsday, but what happens if, um, you know, to um, Mark Richter's department, if they can't find that leader? Because there was a time down there, I think, when, when you weren't able to respond uh, in Robin. So then what's the solution, right? How does that, what do we, do we, do um, do they contract with Yolo County? Do they, what do they do? You know, because I don't think any of us up here want to see an area that's not protected, and I don't know what the solutions to some of that is. And I would hope, in a municipal services review, for those that are perhaps impacted the most by staffing and or revenue, is what happens if that goes away. Well. We have the required topics for the municipal service review, the ones in the legislation, but there's always room to maybe count a few less. Be do we really need to quantify all the apparatus or do we want to focus a little more effort on financial analysis or labor market? You know, I mean, there are those kind of, sure, we have to have some on the apparatus, something, because facility needs, infrastructure needs is a requirement, but maybe, for example, that's sort of some of the wiggle room that we do have is to cut some corners in some areas of lesser interest, which might be some of the work we've done before on on that topic. I don't know if fire station analysis, uh, uh, you know, you have this opportunity where you have all these participants from all the different service providers. It is an opportunity to think about fire station location for the future and growth. Um, it doesn't sound like that's a big interest. Um, it sounds kind of hearing finance and labor market are sort of the top areas, but. I kind of hear survivability. Okay. You know, a, a, there's a certain expectation of a level of service. Are, are we, what are we doing to maintain that and what happens if they can't? And if I might add, you know, Alex alluded to it when he was up there, and thank you for coming to also, Alex, um, that, 
they're having trouble finding finding uh, people to serve in the ambulances that are trained and qualified, and that they're 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 losing to other agencies and so on and so forth. Some of the same fire agencies that are here. Um, I don't think we can find enough paid people right now for the fire services either. I know the sheriff's department has vacancies and, and, and all public service people that are trained, highly trained to do a specific job seem to be really in short supply. And it's not just here in Sutter and Yuba counties, it's all over the nation. Um, and I don't, I don't know how we can afford to, to do it and or find the qualified staff. And I, and maybe that goes to we need people to you know go through Yuba College or something like that and have another training program that tries to get volunteers up to stuff that become full time firemen. I don't, I don't, maybe that's the answer. But it's, it takes a very special person to be a volunteer. I mean, a full time fireman. So um, you got to find a source of people to fill those spots. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I hope I can, I hope I can provide something that's useful for thinking about these topics. I'll certainly try my best and um, just appreciate everybody coming, turning out today when um, uh, you didn't even know exactly why you were asked to come. <laughs> so thank you guys. And um, thank you so much for your cooperation and um, with the study and all the information you're providing. So thank you. And thank you again to the fire chief for taking the time out to come out here. Okay, we'll move to item number six, Newcomb Ranch gill size or annexation of 183.07 acres more or less to the gill size or county drainage district. John, you have comments before we open it for a hearing? Might need your microphone. Uh, through the chair, I just want to, um, John, I want to, uh, Matt has a meeting he's got to get to in here in a few minutes, so. Okay, so you want the one minute version? Yeah, we want okay, the, in, the cliff notes. In July, we approved the, uh, uh, the Newcomb Ranch annexation to the city. We did not approve this at the time because there was no tax sharing agreement. We have a tax sharing agreement that was the that was the hole in this project, and as a result of that, we're recommending approval of this. I make a motion to approve. Second. And so we need to hold a public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. You're oh, yeah. Oh. No public comments? We'll just open. Seeing none, we'll close the hearing. Can I get a motion now? Me too. Me I get a motion. Motions. Matt seconds. Question. I'm sorry, did someone say something? The question. I mean, For a, roll, a roll call vote. vote. <laughs> Mr. Conant? Aye. Mr. Ziegenmeyer? Aye. Mr. Boomgarden? Aye. Mr. Wooten? Aye. Mr. Jawanda? Aye. Motion passes. Item number seven, discussion regarding the Baines annexation to the city of Yuba City. John? Uh, thank you. This, this is uh, we have we received an annexation. I sent you a colored map. One area shows the Baines annexation. Uh, the other area shows you uh, some folks that would like to become part of the annexation. Uh, Sandu, I think, is their name. And there's a couple parcels down to the south part of the Baines annexation that are not not included. So it kind of leaves for a disjointed um, um, uh, annexation. Uh, in speaking with uh, both Ben Moody at the city and um, uh, Doug Libby at the county, the county and the city both support the idea of just bringing in that whole squ uh, square area, all of it. Uh, and um, it's consistent with the East, Linda, East Lincoln specific plan. I keep calling it the East Ling Linda plan. And uh, the thought was is that if there's enough protest that it, it could terminate the annexation for um, 
the banes. Well, if that happens, then we'll, what we would do is take a step back and just annex the banes property. But I think we got to go with we. I agree with um, uh, Doug and um, and Ben that we should go ahead and annex the try to annex attempt to annex the entire area. It is in the city's general plan. It's been pre-zoned. It's in the specific plan. And um, for justification, um, Doug Libby sent me an email today that has just a great justification for doing all this, and it's the exact same thoughts that I would have. So, And, um, by the way, Ben Moody has. So the city, the county, and LAFCO, we, uh, as staff, we all agree that we should make an attempt to... Uh, to annex that whole area to the city, amend this application to include that, and um, at least hear it and notify the landowners and uh, just go through the process and see what happens. <clears throat> through, through the chair. So we're, we're, are, we, are we going to vote on having that discussion or is this the discussion here? Oh, this is just a discussion. Okay. What we're gonna do is vote on the uh, actual annexation um, uh, when it comes up in a, in a couple months. All right. Okay, sounds good. I mean, my, my biggest thing is I'm, you know, like, I'd like to take in consideration the supervisors and, and council members that, that um, more or less, you know, have constituents in those areas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, and I haven't received, a, uh, I don't have a list of a lot of these areas, but I could get it through the county GIS fairly quickly. Any other comments for John? They would all be notified of any of any hearing we have, and we would will just you can make a decision at at that time if you want to just roll it back to the Baines piece or or not. Thank you. That's the five minute version. Awesome. A little minute. I could talk for hours on this subject. So. Item number eight, discussion regarding AB 361, the new teleconferencing legislation and possible adoption of resolution 2021-007, authorizing teleconference meetings. Okay. Second. What, the resolution? Yeah. Uh, through the chair, that is so we can, um, now this resolution, isn't this used for like being able to Teleconference in case. Someone, yes. Not, yeah, that's what it, Zoom. That's what I thought. And one thing I'm going to add is that that resolution sh should be put on the consent agenda for every meeting. That's every month, correct. Forward. We have to. Every, yes. every time we have a meeting. Yes. Uh, I make a motion to approve. Second. Get a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number nine, executive officer's report. John? Uh, we have a few projects in-house, and it, it, um, I, 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 again, I, I'll do the cup, uh, a minute version, is that we do have another annexation to Gilsizer. We have that Baines annexation. We have one up at Sutter, uh, Sutter CSD, and I just received another one um, for an annexation into the uh, city. So we'll be processing those. We have the, also the LAFCO schedule for 2022 20, is in your packet. And, um, and the, unless things change, that's the schedule we will follow. And things inevitably will change. This, uh, um, I'm not gonna complain about the state uh, controller's office not reading their mail. But uh, they sent a letter out to us that we have uh, the uh, Meridian Cemetery District is inactive. Well, it was it was incorporated uh, into the district that Don Cochran um, is on years ago, and they so I'm going to send them another letter. But I'll be nice and say it's been uh, that we don't have that's not an inactive district. And at that point, I'll just stop because <laughs> you guys are in a hurry. Item number 10, commissioner's reports. I only have one, and that is uh, Commissioner Cochran's wife is, uh, is not uh, uh, feeling well, and it's been asked that we uh, consider uh, a moment of prayer uh, on her behalf, if we could just uh, silently acknowledge that and, um, and, and pray for her uh, speedy recovery.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11 is uh, adjournment to the next meeting, uh, 2 p.m., January 13, 2022. Move to adjourn.